Why, hello everybody. I'm going to show you how to fortify a village. Now this village happens to be here in my survival world. And in essence of time, I mean, I'm going to make a shorter video because, I mean, why watch me spend an hour making this when I can just show you what it looks like in just a few minutes, right? Okay. So, uh, you know, this is my old survival world. This is my hobbit hole. And we're just going to go to my village and I'm going to show you what it looks like when it's fortified. And I'll t explain, you know, why I did each different thing. So I'm just coming over here. Da, 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 da. I'll take a little bit of a shortcut. It's actually been a while since I've been over here. I thought I'd come do this, though, for this video. Da, 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 da. And now over here we see the village. Now let's start pointing out the different parts of why this is a good village fortification. I'll put my horse down. Okay. So for the doors, I use gates. The reason why you want to use gates is because villagers cannot go through them. Or at least they cannot yet. Someday they might change that, but for now they cannot. That keeps the villagers inside. Now, I have these walls that go all around the village. And the thing is, I purposely try to put the wall as close to the buildings as I could. Like this. I'm trying to get as close to the village boundary. And the reason why you want to do that is because if you have a pillager raid starting, you want to decrease the chance that you might spawn inside the village. And that's why you don't want to have this expanded too big. Now the other thing I did is I have ladders that come up to a platform here. Now I put the fence here because the villagers will sometimes find a way up these ladders and jump off and go to the other side. You don't want that happening. So I put the fence there. I put this platform so you can run all the way around the village and you can jump up here and then you can shoot with your bows and arrows. And that's why I have this platform here. If you have a pillager raid, you have your pillagers shooting over here, you know, you can shoot them with your arrows. Other thing too, of course, is the way this is set up, zombies and whatnot cannot get in. Now the other thing I've done to fortify the village is I've put torches almost everywhere. Huh, look, I'm actually not even done yet. Look at all this area that doesn't have torches. So I'm actually not even done with it. Well, I'll change that, do that later. But you really do want to put torches everywhere. Hey, a cat! That you can, and light up the whole place so there's no place for them to spawn. That's an important part of the village fortification. Now another thing, which I've only just barely started, I have a lot of work to do, is you want to build your own iron golems. You know, four blocks of iron and a jack lantern on top. So, uh, if you're wanting to know what that looks like, you know, suppose this is iron. One, two, three, four. And suppose this last block is a jack o' lantern. Put that on top. I think you can also be a carved pumpkin. That'll make an iron golem. That's iron blocks. And you want to space them evenly throughout your village. And it is important that you make them and not the villagers. Here's why. If a villager makes it and you attack it, it will attack back and try to kill you. If you make it and you attack it, it will not attack back. Yeah, it won't try to attack you. So it's best to make the iron golems yourself instead of letting the villagers do it. Even though, you know, it's cheaper, you know, but you, you know, you want to do that yourself. Well, that's kind of the main idea of the village fortifications. Um, of course, there's lots of other things you can do, but at least you know the general gist of how to fortify a village. This is like the, the most important things to make it safe. Uh, so my, my village is pretty much done except for the torches everywhere. Look at all the space. I still don't have torches. Yeah, I've got to fix that. You know another nice thing about having a wall around your village? When a cat does spawn in, he can't get out. Then you can chase him and tame him. Of course, I don't have any fish on me, and by the time I go back and get fish and come back, there's a chance they might have despawned already, so maybe I won't even get that. You know the best way to, you want to know the best way to get cats? Have a chest in the middle of your village with tons of fish in it. Just load it, and as you're passing back and forth trading and you happen to see a cat, then you have your fish there ready and you can just run and tame it. Yeah, that's a good way to do it. And the cats seem to like to spawn near the same time when villagers breed. You know, when children come about. It's not always the case, but, you know, it is kind of random, but it's just something I've kind of noticed. Anyways, that's actually it for now. You've seen how to fortify a village. Um, if any of you have questions, and the, you know, ask me in the comments below. Let's talk about it. And this is actually another thing I'd really like you guys to do. For those of you watching, and you saw something, and you say, hey, there's something else you can do to fortify a village. Something that might even be better. I mean, yeah, let's talk about it. Put that in the comments below. You know, I'll probably pin, you know, the best one I can find, you know, because I want other people to know, because, you know, the thing about me doing these tutorial videos is I'm not like a super smart guy, you know, I'm just an average person, and you guys are really smart, 
You guys have lots of good ideas, and I like to hear from you. So anyways, that's it for this video, and we'll end it right here. So, goodbye.